Hi friends, this is Andrew Carruthers coming to you once again for Sam Via. We're continuing on with more of our Hot Tips series on men's haircutting. What we want to focus on today is how to take really fine hair like Dan has and add a lot of visual texture because it's going to be really challenging. What happens with fine hair is if you're not really aggressive with it, if you put tiny little holes in, the fine hair tends to just fill in the gaps. So what you need to get into your mind is a more aggressive texturizing technique. So you really have to have this vision of a peak and then a valley, and then a peak and then a valley, so that that fine hair doesn't just fill in all the holes and you lose your texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a section starting here right at the front, right on his forehead, and I'm gonna elevate it straight out from where it lives, just straight up into the air. I'm gonna take my scissor and I'm gonna come in at a really steep angle and close. I'm gonna let that long part be long, and I'm gonna skip that and come in, and again, really deep into the hair. Now, as you can see, I've got a really strong peak, a valley, peak, valley, peak. And so I am removing some length, but mainly through those middle pieces in those valleys. I'm gonna continue that across the front hairline. I'm taking my fingers the whole way down to the scalp, so I can get really deeply in there. And I'm using our five and three quarter inch wet cutting scissor. Now this is one of our smaller blade lengths, but because Dan doesn't have terribly long hair, it's totally fine. And I really love this scissor for wet hair cutting. I feel like I have a lot of control over it. So I'm gonna continue across the top of the head. Dan, let's have you tilt down just a little bit. Perfect, right there. And what I need to try and do is not pick up all of the hair that I just barely cut. Because if I put more peaks and valleys in there, I could end up taking length away from things that I don't want. So elevating it straight off from where it lives. And then just like two or three big cuts is really what we need in there. You can probably start to see that texture develop. So I'm just taking those horizontal sections across the top of the head. The reason they're horizontal is because his hair lays this direction, and I'm taking the section across the top of that. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. If you notice, I'm not actually working with soaking wet hair, I'm working with damp hair. What I like about having more of a damp texture in the hair is what we found is that damp, you still see your, te your texture develop, Whereas with wet, a lot of times you're not seeing the texture develop. But with a damp, we still have plenty of control over the hair. So that's why I like to keep the hair just more damp rather than soaking wet. So I'm taking, again, those horizontal sections across the top of the head, deep, deep, deep. I think the main challenge that we run into is we usually do too much. And that's really the key with this is you put a couple big pieces in there and that's what's gonna create the contrast in the haircut. I'm gonna have you tilt just a little farther forward if you can, perfect. So right here in the crown, the one thing I wanna be careful of, let me spin him around here for a moment. As you can see, he's got a really strong swirl through here. I need to be careful because if I go in really, really intensely and cut some deep short points in there, he might end up with some sprigs that we don't want. So pay attention to when you enter this crown area that you're not creating a, a challenge that he's gonna have to deal with at home. The nice thing is right through here, it actually kind of grows up and forward. So I'm not quite as worried about Dan's uh, growth pattern there in the crown because it's gonna be manageable. But I'm not gonna go quite as deep into the haircut as I did in the front areas. So really, that's pretty much what you do for the cutting portion. Now, what I wanna show you is a couple ideas on how to approach this type of hair with the product choices. So what I'm gonna start with is Redken's Wool Shake. What I'm digging about Wool Shake is that it adds a really rough and abundant texture to the hair. So I'm gonna prep the hair, the hair with the wool shake. Make sure you, you shake it up really, really well first. They put shake in the name for a reason. You gotta shake it up. Just a handful of sprays of that in there. 
And then I'm gonna hit it with a blow dryer. This is one place that I do actually talk to my male clients about blow drying their hair. What blow drying does is it helps to expand the cuticle of the hair. So where he has finer hair, it's gonna rough it up and give it more body and texture. So I'm gonna go medium airflow and high heat. Now the reason I'm doing medium airflow is if I go in with really high airflow, what tends to happen sometimes is that we end up drying it into one spot. And I want time to be able to work the hair back and forth and back and forth. If, if I go in with the high airflow, high heat, it dries almost too quickly for me. And what I'm doing with my fingers is I'm doing this type of motion. I'm scrunching the hair and roughing it up in my fingertips. And you can start to see his hair really expand now and get a lot of movement. And what's really cool is I love the term wool shake because if you guys notice, it is almost getting a wooly sort of texture to it. And I love that. I think it's the coolest product. I've been using this a lot on a lot of my male clients and actually a lot of my female clients that want more of that beachy texture too. So just roughing it up, roughing it up with my fingers, twisting, twisting. And this is exactly what I would share with my client in the chair. You know, our big tip to you is whatever you do behind the chair with your blow dryer and your products, you're also educating your guest on those products and those techniques as well. So make sure you're doing that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of Redken's rough paste. I'm just going to use enough to hit the ends. Now this isn't a very important technique in men's hairdressing. I call it the shoe shine. We call it the shoe shine. So I'm gonna get it all over my hands and then I'm gonna brush across the hair as if I'm trying to shine the tips of it. Rather than taking my hand and sticking it right down at the root where I'm gonna get too much product and where his hair tends to be that finer texture, I might end up making it look thinner instead of thicker. By doing this, I'm keeping the product where we need it most in the ends and then I'm leaving the density down at the scalp because as long as the scalp doesn't show, the hair looks more dense. As soon as that scalp start, starts to show, that's when our male clients start to feel thin. So really focusing that rough paste right there on the tips. Dan, you're a handsome man. And that's how we get that really great full peak and valley sort of texture. I think you guys can see it on camera. I can see it here for sure. Finally, fine hair has dramatic texture to it. Don't be afraid of those peaks and valleys. And please keep sending your requests to our Facebook page because that's what gives us fuel for these videos. Love you guys. I'm Andrew Carruthers for Sanvia.